Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, in today's final episode on the Stug, uh, we're going to be working on a couple of things. We're going to finish off the tow cable, uh, which I've partially done. Uh, so I've kind of done one side and left the other side to do on camera here, show you how we kind of work that and weather it and muddy it up and chip it a little bit. Uh, and then the last piece we're going to focus on is the uh, is the muffler here, and you can hopefully see from there that I've done one side of the muffler uh, and left the other side uh, undone, so we'll, we'll attack that today. And I think that'll pretty much um, wrap up the, the work that we're doing on the Stug here. Um, since we last saw each other, I went ahead and uh, put back in the, uh, the various periscopes and binoculars and whatnot, uh, so that's done. Uh, I still have to put an antenna on, um, but I'll do that uh, off camera. Um, but that'll just be a kind of an aftermarket uh, RV uh, antenna that we'll, we'll put on there. Uh, and then, yeah, just the, the tow cable and the, um, uh, and, and the muffler. And for the muffler, we're gonna use the same kind of technique that we used uh, on previous uh, vehicles, uh, I guess the, the Brumbar in particular, uh, where we're gonna use uh, some acrylic paints uh, and start with a light color rust and work our way down to the darkest color rust and just kind of work it in. A, a little bit of a variation on this one just to kind of reduce the effect of it, so just to try something different on this vehicle. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to it, uh, we'll get to it shortly. So uh, yeah, now we'll, this will be the last one. I think that'll wrap it up. There might be just maybe a quick recap with, uh, with Dave and I, um, but in terms of work on the vehicle, I think we're, uh, we're real close to calling this one done, so. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get to it. Let's start uh, let's start working on the uh, on the tow. Okay, so for the tow cable, um, and this may be hard to pick up on camera, but I've done kind of this side of, of the cable. So what I did is I, I painted it uh, in the in the vehicle colors. Then I gave it a, a bit of a wash. Uh, you can see kind of the the effect of the wash. Uh, then I went through and chipped it a bit, and we're going to use our trusty. Uh, a German uh, black brown camel as our chipping color for that and then gave it a bit of a rub both with uh, our rubber paintbrush and some uh, metal color pigments uh, and also used a, a pencil in some spots just to give it a bit of wear and tear and then worked in some some earth colored pigments the same color we'd use on the rest of the vehicle just to you know just to make it look like it was used although to be fair um, if it was used, would it, you know, would the crew put it back on the vehicle in the exact same neat fashion? Um, you know, I'm not so sure, but okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let that one go. But just for the, just for the sake of argument for trying to, you know, see how we would uh, potentially weather this. Again, this is an, uh, this is a piece I stole from the Dragon uh, Stug. Um, it's much more detailed than, uh, than what we have for what we got with the Tamiya kit and will fit perfectly on the back here covering the uh, the holes that we have and what we're going to do is once this is done um, we'll fix this with some uh, super glue uh, and that'll be that okay so let's get let's pop this off here and let's get to it let's put this get this out of harm's way so the the first thing we'll do is we'll start getting um, some metal color on there so we'll work we'll start with getting some We'll start with our gun. So we're using our same two metal pigments. This is the uh, the MIG 3000 or 3009 gun metal, uh, and then we're also going to use a little bit of the MIG 3021 polish metal, which is a lighter color. Uh, and we'll use our trusty rubber pencil here. We'll use we'll use a few different uh, techniques. So we'll just kind of get that going, and then just gently rub. Now, you'd probably want to stay away from the brackets uh, or the clamps that are holding it onto the vehicle, but you do want to get it in areas. Oops. Like so. Just to show a little bit of wear and tear on it. And the nice thing, again, the nice thing about using this rubber pencil is you can really get into the details. Like, like if I was trying to do this with my finger, trying to get in here without, you know, hitting the, the, the clamp that secures it to the vehicle would be a little problematic. 
so you can get right in there with it, which is nice. Again, a great, great tip from uh, from Mig himself on using these things. If you haven't already gotten one, I highly recommend it. And I've had some good friends here, some local guys. Dave Price being one of them, tell me that they've gone out and gotten one as well. And are using it, which is uh, which is great to hear. So again, I've already put, so again, uh, the, the sequence of events here is you, you, you paint it the same color as the vehicle. You give it a wash, which will get in and around the bolt detail and the clamps and kind of the strands of the cable itself. Don't forget the end. The ends are probably where you'd see the most wear and tear. Do the kind of the sides here. Don't forget them because you'll see that. And then just maybe a little bit on the... Now we're going to chip... We're going to chip this part here that kind of secures the cable, just like we did here, like you can kind of see. And it's hard to tell, like the dark brown chip and the gray and whatnot, but it's it's there. It's one of those little details that you create on your vehicle so that once you know, people get up close to it, they notice it and they see it. Let's go back up and touch, touch up the other side as well. Okay, so let's go, so now that does it for the gun metal, so let's seal that up and let's take some polished metal. So again, this is kind of a, this is more of a lighter metal, like a silver metal color, as opposed to like a kind of dark gray. So we'll just do this for some of the highlights. Just like that. I'm just don't get too crazy with it. Maybe inside there'd be a lot of friction here with shackles and whatnot that it would come into contact with. And the only reason I'm going back and doing this other side is that because probably I've like again you don't I don't typically fix this. Um, but I have been handling it. So as such, I've taken off what I've kind of put on here before. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. That's all you have to do. And if you wanted to take a pencil to it, so this is another way of doing it where you can just With a and it, you know I, I brought this thing. I don't know that you'd want to use this thick monstrosity, but any artist pencil that you can get at your local art, art store would be fine. To a point, and again the same. I mean the same benefit that you have with the rubber paintbrush you have with the pencil because you can get it to a fairly precise tip, and that allows you to kind of get into the you know, the tighter areas. That using a device like your finger will just not allow for. So is there is there one method that's better than the other? I don't know, I like kind of using all three. Kind of just varies it up a bit. So now that we've done that, let's go and chip it a bit. So we'll use a fine uh, brush your or go to chipping color any any dark color will do I mean, if you use like a dark gray or a black not a well, black might be a little bit might be a little let's get some all right so now we're gonna chip so again just to get a little bit of paint on here and just kind of chip just very random kind of pattern Uh, 
maybe a little bit, here's where you can get a little bit on the clock because they would get a little beaten up as well. But you're only chipping either the clamps or this part of the tow cable that, I guess, kind of seals the, the two ends together. There you go. That looks good. So don't have to, you know, don't overdo it. Again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, just like in the world, the words of the great Mike Rinaldi, no, no chip or scratch is too small. Don't forget to do the inside of the eyelet here. And you just kind of, I understand, I've already done these, but. And there, and there you have it. I think that's your, ah, the only thing we have to do, sorry, is let's go in and work in some pigment. Just a bit, just to, you know, if this was used, it would pick up it would pick up some pigment. Um, yeah, here's another brush. So, and, and I would do this very, very sparingly. Now, if you had this in a in a more um, you know un unconventional fashion, meaning it was just like the crew took it off, and instead of putting it back on in the same configuration, they just kind of draped it over the vehicle, indicating that it was really used. Then you, know, you can go to town a little bit more on on. Um, getting some pigments and some earth colors in there, but we'll just kind of just stipple a little bit. So you don't, again, you don't need a lot. off and then for those again you might want to go over it with you know pencil to kind of bring back bring back some of the metal like that I think that looks really good and then you can go again it's you're kind of layering this in you can go in and just kind of touch some of the areas that you've chipped already, just to just give it that extra little kind of that layered effect, which is what you want. I have to say this, you know, I'm quite impressed with the Dragon tow cable. The detail is really I mean, it looks. I mean, to me, it looks like it's as good as an aftermarket piece. And there you have it. So the only thing that's left to do now is to fix it onto the vehicle with uh, with some super glue, and for that, um, we'll use some thicker uh, gel type glue uh, to get that on there. So um, yeah. So why don't we why don't we look at doing that? So this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So again, just to test fit it one last time. So this is the proper orientation. So just make sure it kind of clears the retaining brackets and whatnot, clear the hatches. And you really, what you're really worried about here is just covering those two holes. So in hindsight, I might have filled them in um, just so that you don't have to worry about this part too much, but I think it'll, it'll work out okay. So now what we should do is let's get a little bit of this onto, um, let's flip this guy over. So again, a nice, a nice use for these cups is to, uh, Act this kind of small little palette, so we'll get a little bit of this on there like that. Seal that up. 
And then uh, with a nice toothpick, take that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just well, maybe put some on here and here, here and here. And that yeah, should be good enough. Now the trick will be to get this on here without And then, so that so this side's down pretty good. And we just gotta get that's down pretty good there. That's perfect. So we just gotta get this guy to sit. So maybe we'll put something, uh, or maybe I'll just hold him down. So we're just holding this down in place while it's set. So three, three of the ends are down. We're just getting this fourth end to sit down properly. But you can tell that it looks really good. So if you see, like when you do this type of thing, that's the danger of gluing something onto a painted surface after that, is that if you're using like super glue, you might get some little gloss points here where the glue kind of seeps out like I am here. So once it dries, what we'll do is we'll take some of our ultra matte varnish and just paint it on manually with a paintbrush um, just to hide those areas. But I have to say, I'm pretty happy with doing this. There we go, that's sitting now quite nicely. Let's hold that down a little bit more just to make sure she behaves. Now you could use some accelerator. The problem using accelerator though on a painted surface is that you know it might discolor. So we'll just hold it down. Count to ten. finger. Yeah, so I'm going to keep this in place for a little bit and then we'll uh, uh, we'll just come back and touch up the some of the gloss spots that we created with the glue with the matte varnish and then we'll be on to our exhaust. Okay, so we've uh, we've gotten the the cables on the glue the super glue has dried um, but in some spots it's created a bit of a glossy spot. You can kind of see it just under this corner bracket here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this matte varnish, ultra matte varnish, and just get, and just not, again, you're, you've, most of it's off the brush, and you're just kind of stippling. And that should cut back the glossiness of that. And there you have it. That's your cable. Done. So now we can go on to the um, to the muffler. So while we're Robert has the camera on this, get that out of the way. So I'll use this jar as a prop here. So what we've done, what I've done, is I've I've done one side. So there's a kind of a two-sided muffler here. There's, and I've done one side here. So this is the completed side, and. Um, and it's again using the same technique that we that we use on the brum bar, minus pigments. I didn't put any pigments on this. Um, all I did was uh, use the and we'll, we'll replicate shortly on this side, but just use the various rust acrylic rust colors, thin them down with water, 
and just kind of randomly put them on. And the, and the goal here was to get a variation of the rust color and to have some of that Panzer Grey base show through. Again, the premise being that, um, you know, this vehicle was uh, in Barbarossa, not in the field, terribly long. Um, so not, you know, don't go crazy on the, uh, on the rusting of the, uh, of the muffler here. So, so we'll, uh, I'll get the pallet set up and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get onto that uh, last piece of it. Okay, so for the uh, for the rusting of the muffler, um, we're using our trusty Life Color acrylics. Now you can use any acrylics. You can use Vallejo, AK, uh, whatever. But I have to have these handy. So you start. Um, so I would work with minimum three colors, but we have four here. So you start with your uh, uh, light shadow rust, and then we'll work our way to our uh, light shadow one, or this is sorry, light shadow two, light shadow one. And then the next darker color is your base color, and then your rust dark shadow. So with a fine brush, and then you kind of really water it down, like so. And then, this would be easier if I was left-handed. So, sorry, Robert. That's good. Let me do this. So then what you do is just draw it just very randomly. And you'll see because the paint is so thin with water, it kind of beads. That's okay, that's what you want. Let's go pick up a little bit more. Make sure you get everywhere, make sure you get the top. Make sure you get the bottom in here, and you're just, just kind of bouncing around. Make sure you get the underneath. Again, any any acrylic will do, I, and you could probably do this with oils too, I guess. But ever since I saw Rinaldi's method in his first book, I was hooked. And you can see, look, this part's dried already, and you can get a nice kind of translucent. Excellent. Don't forget to do this side in here. There you go. Like so. Done. So now we go to our next, and you, and you just work your way up. Get your next, and these life color paints are amazing. You just get some on your palette, just get a little bit of water. A little bit more water. Just like so. Close that up so if we knock it over, we don't make a mess. And do the same thing. And you just the same, just random. So this is actually this is where having a shaky hand is actually a good thing. Don't forget the underside. Like so. And you can see it's already starting to harmonize. Sorry, I'm just gonna flip it just so I can get and make sure I get the other, the inner side of that here. And up and down. And just, just bouncing your, you're just really kind of just bouncing your paintbrush along the, the muffler. Like so. Easy. Okay, so then we go on to our our base color, which is our third color. Nice thing about these life color paints is I don't know what they do, but they seem to be able to like the the the, the pigment seems to say they suspend it. Like you almost never have to mix or shake these things, and they have every range. They have every color possible. They have a beautiful range of colors. The only challenge though is I haven't been able to get them to spray properly through an airbrush. So it's 
The same thing, just kind of bounce your paintbrush along. You can see how they're, they're looking more and more the same now. And it's nice because we have a little bit of the gray showing through, which is what you want. I think that's good. Now we'll get the next, uh, the last color, which is the darkest color, which is the rush shadow. And again, you can use, you know, if you've got some AK or or Vallejo or Mig rust color in the in the tube bottles or like these kind of bottles, same same thing. Um, you may want to, to, if you're using that, you may want to add some of that uh, airbrush flow or some kind of retarder to it. Pick up a little bit more paint there. That's a nice dark rusty color, right? Eh? And then, same type of thing, just kind of dance. Just like so. And if you want to go back and say, you know what, I've kind of lost a little bit of the first color, you can go back and do that too. All right? You can, there's no, uh, this is, see, they only, yeah, they, dry, they do dry a little bit quick. But that's okay, we got lots to work with here, so. So if I want to go over and just touch up a little bit of the first color, I can do that too. Just right. anything that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that dry for a minute, then I'm gonna give it a very light glazing with um, the base color. And by glazing, I mean like just, and like really thin. Oh, that's even, that's too, way too much paint. And what's, what that's going to do is that's going to harmonize everything and bring it all together. So once that dries, it'll dry very similar to what we have there. So we'll give that a few minutes off camera and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of pigment, uh, again the same mud pigment, just to kind of deaden it down a bit like we did on the other side here. So I'm just going to put, because again this would be subject to the same, you know, dust and whatnot that the rest of the vehicle was, was subject to. So just just to kind of knock it back. And there you have it. Now the only thing that's left to do is to get some soot into that, uh, that tailpipe. So again, with our trust, and we'll get all that metal pigment off our trusty 
brush or a rubber brush. I'll we'll pick up some black pigment, so some any black or down, dark brown smoke or soot or will be just fine. Close that up. And then simply just I'm just kind of rotate. So let me take this. There we go. And then do a little bit on the out, you know, just kind of the outside of the pipe. Just to show that it's kind of the business end of the muffler. And there you have it. And that's the muffler done. Very easy. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's it on the stug. We're, we're just, uh, again, I'll do the antenna off camera. Uh, that's just simply super gluing and, you know, an aftermarket uh, antenna here. You can do stretch screw as well, but I've got some aftermarket antennas at home I'll use. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, we're done. So thanks again for, uh, for, you know, hanging out with me on this, uh, on this journey, on this particular vehicle. Um, hope, uh, hope, uh, hope, uh, some people were, were at least to take away some, you know, some tips or tricks on, uh, on, you know, whether they're doing this vehicle or something similar or any other vehicle for that, uh, for that matter. Um, and we'll look forward to the next set of videos that I think will be on a Russian, uh, early war BT seven, uh, in uh, a nice uh, light Soviet green. Um, but I'm still kind of finalizing that. So I think we might have one just quick recap session with, uh, with, uh, Dave Brown on camera. Um, but in terms of the, you know, doing, uh, working on this vehicle, uh, that kind of concludes the session. So, so thanks again for, uh, for, uh, sitting with me and, and bearing with me on this and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys uh, on the next project. Thanks very much.